Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the series on Romans chapters 1 through 8. On the previous videos, we went through the introduction of Romans and also Paul's first point, which was about sin. Today we're going to talk about the law. So continuing Paul's first point about sin, he now in chapter 2 is trying to show the Jewish people that they're no different than the Gentiles or any Greek or anyone who's not a Jew. So um, there was a tendency in some Jews to maybe judge the rest of the world that didn't have God's law as sinners with when, when overlooking their own sin, basically. So Paul wanted to be clear that when he's talking about how the world is guilty of sin, he's talking about all people, Jew or Gentile alike. Just because someone has the law doesn't mean that they're innocent or not guilty of the same sins. Verse 12, Paul says this, All those who sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all those who sinned under the law will be judged by the law. What he's saying here is this. So, <clears throat> you have to understand that Breaking God's law and committing a sin really is the same thing, okay? A person who doesn't know God's law doesn't know that that's what they're doing. They don't know that in committing that act of sin, they were breaking one of God's laws. If they told a lie, that's a sin. But they didn't know that that's one of the Ten Commandments, not, that thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. They didn't know that. A Jewish person would know that was the ninth commandment and I broke God's law. The point here is if you don't know it's a law, it's still sin. So those who don't know the law are going to perish without the law. Those who know the law will be judged by the law. So if you know that the thing that you've done is breaking God's law, then you're going to be judged as someone who broke the law, as someone who's guilty of breaking that law. If you don't know what you've done was breaking the law, you're just going to be judged by your own conscience, basically, and you're going to be considered the same level of sinner as anyone else. So Paul's trying to get the Jewish person who knows the law to see that they're not any better. Yeah, it's better that they know the law, but it's, it's not going to help them. It's not going to make them any less guilty of sin. So what is the point of the law? What is the point? So God gave the original law to Moses. And it started with the Ten Commandments. There was a lot more than just the Ten Commandments, though. All throughout the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and De Deuteronomy, there was many, many laws given from God through Moses to the people. And it was the law and how they were meant to function. There was three main parts of the law. The ceremonial law, the moral code of the law, or the commandments, and the sacrificial system. And all three of these parts were important. Uh, the ceremonial part of the law was literally just how the temple was meant to be furnished, how to build it, what the specs were, what the blueprints were, it would give you things like, here's what the priests are supposed to wear. Here's how the, the priests operate. Here's what they dress like. All these things like that. Um, these are going to be specific days, like holidays, basically feast days that we celebrate. And here's when we celebrate them. And here's how we celebrate them. Things like that. The priesthood will be these particular people. Here's the person that will be a priest. Here's how they will become a priest. On and on and on. Just ceremonial laws. The moral code of the law was just basically saying, here are a bunch of things you should not do. Don't do these things. God is commanding us to not do these things because these things are evil in his sight. Pretty self-explanatory. The third part of the law was the sacrificial system. So here's something you have to understand about sin is 
the penalty of sin is death. There's no getting around it. There's no way to avoid it. There's nothing you can do to retract it. The penalty of sin is death. Going back to the original sin in the Garden of Eden, God's promise was, you're going to die. And it never changes. The penalty of sin is death. So, to try to avoid it is impossible. You have to go with it. But the thing you can do is to have a substitute. So instead of you dying for your sin, someone else is going to have to die in your place. Well, we're not going to sacrifice a, another human, but we will sacrifice an animal. So they would bring bullocks or lambs or even doves, depending on who the person was and what they had to offer, you would bring some type of sacrifice. And it was a sacrifice without blemish. You did not bring a lamb that was sickly and was going to die anyway. You didn't do that. You brought the best lamb you had. Now we know the main reason for that was because that was going to represent Jesus Christ. Every animal sacrifice would be a representation of Jesus Christ who would be coming in the future. They didn't understand that totally. But that sacrificial system was basically just the information. This is how you do it. This is who needs to offer a sacrifice. This is why they need to offer the sacrifice. When the sacrifice is offered, this is who will actually do the offering. This is where it will happen. This is how it will happen. Very, very important that it was done exactly the way God said no altering it whatsoever. Needless to say, many, many, many thousands and thousands, probably millions of animals were sacrificed over a long period of time as part of the sacrificial system, which was once again part of the law. So that's the backstory on the law, the ceremonial law, the moral code of the law, and the sacrificial system called the Law of Moses only called the law of Moses because God gave it to the people, the children of Israel, the Jewish people through Moses. So back to Romans. Paul is trying to get the Jewish people who have the law of Moses to understand that just because you have the law of Moses doesn't make you any different, doesn't make you any better. You're still just as guilty before God as any non-Jew in the whole world might be who's never even heard of the law. It doesn't matter. You know, once again, let me just read that. All those who sin without the law will also perish without the law. All those who sin under the law will be judged by the law. So, it doesn't really matter. Now, here's something you got to understand about the sacrificial system. It was all a part of and a foreshadowing and a type of Jesus Christ. There was really no power in the blood of those animals that gave their life. The blood of an animal honestly doesn't have any power. It was a temporary thing. So yes, if they were obedient to the law and they offered those animal sacrifices, they were atoned for it. It, it worked and it did its job. But it was always meant to be a temporary stopgap measure until the real sacrifice would show up. Okay. The the thing about the animal that even made it suffice temporarily was the fact it was innocent. Innocent blood. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about Jesus in the next part and how he is the ultimate sacrifice. But basically, Jesus fulfilled the law in every imaginable way. So let's just backtrack for a second. In order for sin to be atoned for, death has to happen. There's no getting around it. There's no other way. Okay? Had to be a sacrifice. Of course, we're going to talk about it next time, but Jesus is that sacrifice. Also, the law had to be fulfilled. So these 
all these laws, these commandments that were given, someone had to keep all these laws. Now, it's been made clear here that we've all sinned. We've all broken God's laws. We've all fallen short. But these laws weren't just put out there just as good advice. They had to be kept. Well, how is that possible? If we've all failed, who could possibly keep them? Jesus. Okay? But the point that Paul's making here is the law as a human being never was meant to actually save somebody. So... I know, and you know, that Jesus fulfilled the law. We know that he became that sacrifice for us. But does that mean that the law to me and you is pointless? That it has no relevance? Not at all. Not at all. Let me read chapter 3, verse 19. Paul says this to the Roman church. Now we know that whatsoever the law says, it speaks to those who are subject to the law, so that every mouth may be shut, and the whole world may become subject to God's judgment. For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. Okay? I'm going to read the King James Version as well. That was from the Holman Christian Standard Version. In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19, this is in the King James Version. I really like the way that this is worded. It says, Now we know that whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So that is the answer to what the real purpose of the law is. The law's real purpose is not to save anybody. It's to show them that they need saving. So let me give you three quick examples. Let's say I cut my leg. I'm outside hiking or something. I cut my leg open. Now, let's say for whatever reason I don't realize that I did it. Okay, I just I got gashed open, but I wasn't paying attention. The thing that's going to quickly tell my body that I got gashed open is I'm going to feel pain. Okay? If there was no pain, and I didn't just happen to physically see it, or maybe feel uh, blood running into my into my boot or whatever the case. I, I wouldn't know that I had been gashed open. I wouldn't know that I had an ailment. So we don't like pain, right? Pain's a terrible thing. But if it wasn't for that pain, I wouldn't know I got cut open and I'm bleeding out. So the pain's a good thing. It tells us there's a problem. When I feel the pain, I look down, I see it, then I can tend to that wound and I can get somewhere where I can get some medical treatment. I'm not going to bleed out and die. Weird example, I know. That's what the law is. The law is not the surgery or the bandage or the stitches or whatever the mending tactic will be to fix that situation. No. The law is the pain. The pain that told me there was a problem. Another example. Say I'm outside and I'm I get dirt all over my face because I'm working out in the yard or whatever the case, I'm gardening or something. And some people come over and I want to look good to them. And I know I've been outside working, so I probably look dirty. Well, a mirror, would, if I looked in the mirror, if I looked in this mirror, I'd be able to see there's dirt on my face. And I could clean my face off at least or look presentable to my company, whatever the case. The mirror, though, is not going to take the dirt off my face. The mirror is just going to show me the dirt. Third example. Say I need to get up in my attic uh, to, to clean the attic. And I know that there's maybe some filth up there in the attic or maybe there's something I need to find up there. But if I just pop my head up in the attic and I don't have a flashlight, I don't see what I'm looking for, okay? I'm not going to be able to clean the attic. I'm not going to be able to find what I'm looking for. 
if I pop my head up with the flashlight, I can see into the corners of that attic and I can be able to tell what's up there, what needs to be done. So whether it's a flashlight, whether it's a mirror, or whatever the case, these are just examples of what the law is. So back in the day, temporarily, the law was a schoolmaster, basically, and it was a system that they did follow temporarily to bring about temporary sacrifices and atonement. But that all that part of the law after Christ came was fulfilled. It's totally obsolete now, which we're going to talk about later when Paul explains how we're dead to the law. But the law to a Christian in our modern day is obsolete. But the the eternal part of the law that has never went away and never will go away and is still relative today is the fact that the law shows us our sinfulness. Okay, So that's really what the law is really meant to be about. When I read the commandments that says I shouldn't do these things and then I'm tempted to do them and I know I've done them and I'm tempted to do them more and I find myself breaking these laws and sinning against God over and over and over knowing that these are laws of God didn't help me to keep the laws it actually showed me that I'm a lot more guilty than I realized so Paul is trying to get them to exp to understand just because they have the law doesn't mean that they're any more saved than anyone else who doesn't have the law the real purpose of the law is to shut your mouth. That's what he says. That the that it will shut the mouths of the people and realize, you know what? I am not righteous. It cuts out self righteousness real quick. The law shows us how unlawful we really are, how unrighteous we really are, and it makes it very clear to us that just like when that lake is gashed open, we need to go to the doctor. Okay. It's, it's not leaving it up to chance. It's making it very clear that we are in need of a doctor. We are sick. We are in trouble. And there is no self-righteousness here. So the law is a great thing. The law is not a bad thing. And even today when somebody gets saved, the main reason they're saved is the conviction of their heart. And they know that they're guilty of sin. And usually that comes via the law. They know they've... They, they know they've committed sin, which is the breaking of God's law, and they know they need to repent. So that was the real purpose of the law from the beginning. Though it did have temporary side missions, or a, it, had, it had dual uses for a time, its real purpose, and the part of it that'll never go away, is that part, to make sure we know we're in trouble and we need a Savior. So we'll stop it there, and next time we'll be we'll getting into the answer. We've talked about the problem. We've talked about the law as the mirror that shows us we have a problem. And now we're going to talk about the answer in the next video. So have a great day, and thanks for stopping by.